Moving on to the global economy, China has a trillion dollar plan to build roads and rail lines in Asia, Africa, and Europe. They're doing a lot of that already. Let's get back to Peter Morisi. Uh, and I know, Peter, China is a favorite topic of yours. I tend to be very skeptical when it comes to China. Uh, so I've got to believe this so-called new Silk Road, as they're calling it, has to be designed to largely benefit Chinese companies and their economy. Am I wrong? Well, that is the idea. I mean, China has a lot of excess capacity in steel, concrete, and so forth. And let's face it, that's the stuff you use to build roads and bridges and, right. and railroads. And, and at the same time, it offers an opportunity for China to develop its middle tech and high tech sector in, in areas that, that support those kinds of initiatives. Still, some American companies like, uh, you know, Caterpillar and GE stand to benefit from this. The real question is, can they pull it off? Generally speaking, big grand schemes pursued by governments, especially across borders, tend to run into all kinds of problems because, you know, government bureaucrats, they're not the best risk managers, and they're going to be lending a lot of this money to people that they don't know in foreign cultures. But you could argue, and many have, that China's way ahead of the U.S. on this uh, global infrastructure project. They've been in Africa for many, many years, building out the roads and rail lines there. Um, they're very, they've been doing it under everybody's noses. I mean, it sounds like it's doing something, you know, uh, there's a scheme involved. They're just very good at the long game, aren't they? And are they getting a leg up over the U.S.? I think they are, and I think it's a wake-up call for the Trump administration. For the last 16 years, let's not be partisan, the White House is worried about domestic welfare, you know, basically providing prescription drug, drug benefits to seniors, building out health care and so forth, and been neglecting its international responsibilities. And uh, we see the fruits of that. Uh, the Obama folks emphasized tying foreign countries to America through trade, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, uh, negotiating a similar deal in Europe, whereas the Chinese are focusing on more tangible things that developing countries have trouble doing for themselves because of lack of money. And if it's the one thing the Chinese have, it might not be expertise. It's cash. Yes. Lots of it. <laughs> and so they're, com they're willing to build you that airport where the United States says, well, let's have a free trade agreement. Now, along comes Mr. Trump, and he cancels the free trade agreements while China is out there saying, want some more concrete? Who gets a leg up in a situation like that? The answer is China is following through. It's got continuity and focus and vision. The United States is, quite frankly, quixotic in its actions. And let's face it, this White House is not instilling confidence in its ability to execute or perform. 30 seconds, Peter. You know, uh, candidate Donald Trump basically made China out to be the root of all evil when it came to trade. But now, apparently, the leaders of the two countries are BFFs. Do you buy into that? Is their market going to be, are we going to have more access to the Chinese market? Is this a, a deal, a trade deal that's going to work? It's a trade deal that might work. In the past, deals like this haven't worked. But even mm. if it does, it only covers some very small slivers of our concerns about trade with China. It really doesn't deal with the big picture. Unfortunately, Mr. Obama persuaded Mr. Trump to focus on North Korea, that somehow they could persuade China uh, to, to help him out if he caved in on trade. Well, he's caved in on trade. And last I heard, North Korea is still shooting off those yeah, missiles. They certainly are. Peter Morisi, as always, great stuff. Thanks for joining us, Peter.